Hello, hello. All right, so we need some people up front for this. Renata's going to play a video for us. What'd you say? I I can't hear what you're saying. I'm sorry. Are we ready? All right. Oh yeah. All right. Who knows? Who knows this song? Come up. This is church clap. Let's go. Goodness. There's some harder ones? Okay, I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get it. I'm ready. Ah! I went forward. Okay. Ah! Oh. Okay. Do you guys know how to do this? You guys are just laughing at me. I'm going to practice this all week. Woo! Well done. Well done, everyone. That was amazing. How many of you guys know this song? Do you guys know what today is? What's, what's the date today? September. Today's not Christmas.
Well, welcome everyone to the 21st of this month of the 21st of the, today's the 22nd? Really? No. It's the 21st. Your English teacher is probably living in a different country. Hey. Renata's is laughing at me in the back there. All right, so we got some announcements to start off this week. Um, that was a good, fun little church clap thing. Does anyone want to volunteer to teach me this? I will pay them by the hour because it will take me more than an hour to learn this dance. Three days? Okay, I heard like, is this me? Is this me? What am I doing? Okay. Four-year-olds got this dance? Okay, well, I'm just old. That's why my, my hips don't move as they used to. Okay, I will stop. Um, I will learn this, okay? And we will come someday, and we will line this stage, and we will church clap together. But until then, <laughs> I will... Is there YouTube videos learning how to do this? It's probably a YouTube video for everything. It's funny just watching me try to dance up here. I was just trying my best to, to, it's, it's the, I can get the, the left, no, the right left back, and then I have no idea what happens after that. I know that they turn somehow and they clap between their legs. I don't know, don't know, man. But anyway, um, let's see. We got a couple announcements and we got some crazy things that we're doing today. So. Night of Worship is, anyone know? It's right up there. The 25th. Wow, that was nice. All right, yeah. The 25th uh, at 6 p.m., we're going to go there, and we're going to take over a whole section of the church. We're going to be like, um, youth only. You have to be 25 and under because I'm 25. So, Well, what if Jeff wants to sit with us? 25 and under still, right? Exactly. I like that. He's 20. He's 20. He's just the mustache. Makes him look a little bit mature. He's 20. I like that. Jeff, thank you for being the security 10, 20 year old. We appreciate it. <laughs> All right. Anyway, um, so 25th of September, don't forget that is this Sunday evening. So clear Sunday evening. We're going to be there. Oh, this is me being noisy again. Um, Okay, I will grab a mic. Um, number Thrace. Thrace? Thrace. Is that uno dos? Thrace. I just added a TH in there. All right. So, see you at the poll. Is also this coming week. Does anyone know what's happening next week Wednesday? There's two things. See you at the poll and... We're at the stadium, so we are not here. Remember, we are not here. If you know someone here that is going to be coming here, don't tell them don't come. The stadium is actually just the field, right? Am I right? Okay. Um, it's by the, by the middle school, but we'll go back to see you at the pool. So um, at the, in the morning time, I believe... Renata, was the time 7 or 7.30? Okay, 7.30 at the poll. Um, we're going to meet, uh, and we're just going to be praying. We're praying for our schools, praying for our communities, praying for safety, praying for our health. I know this week we had a couple people at my school sick, so um, keep praying for different things. Pray for his knee. You can pray for lots of different things, but it's a day, a, a day nationally where people all over the world not the world, probably the U.S., um, is praying for um, their schools. So, see you at the poll is this week. So, if you can go to school a little bit earlier, uh, go to your poll, and just with your friends, just gather together and pray. Um, even if you have non-Christian friends, you can say, come on over, this is what we're going to do today, and maybe you can be uh, starting a conversation for the gospel. Um, but that night is also Fields of Faith and... We are going to be meeting, and this is not just for us. So I want you to invite your friends at school, invite your friends in your community, your neighbors, 
your mom, your dad. Like, it's not just for, it's mostly for your uh, students, but um, adults can come too. There's going to be food trucks and stuff. Um, we are going to be meeting. Um, one thing I did learn this week, uh, for those of you who did not know before, because I didn't announce it, was um, if you would like, you can bring lawn chairs or blankets. Because there's not going to be seats there. If you want to sit on the grass, you can. But if you can, bring a lawn chair or a blanket to sit to enjoy the program that we have. Um, and also to just hang out or put your stuff down while you're doing activities or whatever. So lawn chairs and blankets. Um, is someone's alarm going off? Is that my alarm? Nope. Nope, I'm already awake. So I think someone's alarm is going off if they want to wake up. <laughs> but yeah, all right, so Fields of Faith is this coming week. Um, also, there's going to be t-shirts available for us to buy. So if you want to bring extra money um, to get a Fields of Faith t-shirt, that would be pretty cool. So bring money for food trucks, bring money for a t-shirt if you would like. Um, but we're all going to be meeting together, and we got to meet a ton of students. Like, there's... I was talking to Jaime this week, and he was saying it could be anywhere between 400 to 1,000 people coming and showing up. So you, would, you don't want to miss this. Um, don't get lost. Just look for, I don't know, any of us all around, and we'll be kind of meeting together. We'll want to go meet other students and stuff as well, uh, but most of the activities and stuff will be together. I know Alexia and Nate are on the worship team, and that's pretty cool. So we get to support them and then see some other, uh, other people from all around the valley um, just being able to come together and worship as well. So 28th, that is next week Wednesday. Don't come here. So see if you can get a ride there because um, that's where we'll be meeting. I am going to be driving from a different location, but we will try to see if we can work something out. Um. Let's see. All right, we got one more announcement for tonight. Um, and this is a little bit of ways away, but we want to start announcing it now. So Dare to Share Live is coming up. And we are actually hosting, hosting it in this building. And we're going to try to see if we can get some more people to join us. Dare to Share Live is an, an, an entire day thing, right? So this is November 12th. This, the theme this year is drenched with the Spirit of God, and Renata got us a cool logo and everything. There are t-shirts and all those things that are going to be available to us coming up soon. And how many of you have been to Dare to Share Live already? All right, so quite a bit of you. Um, this is it's a good opportunity for us to come together, um, learn a little bit more about sharing the gospel, and then actually we get to go do it. So we're still working out some of the details, but I wanted to start announcing this November 12th right here, and all of you guys are invited, and I want you to invite some more people as well. Uh, we're going to see if we can try to invite a couple more youth groups or something like that. Um, when we open the signups, it will be in the Church Center app. So how many of you guys have the Church Center app on your phone? Yep. If you don't, come see me. I'll help you figure that out. Um, but that's when we open signups for that. So more details is to come. Just save the date. When is it? Mm, you guys don't seem sure. When is it? <laughs> Not September 22nd. That's tomorrow. November 12th. November 12th, right? All right. Sweet. Is that a bagel? It's pizza. Oh, that is pizza. Just a random pizza on the floor. Okay. Sounds good. All right. So that is it for our announcements. Um, you guys remember the name of our series that we're going through tonight? I mean, th for the past two weeks. What is it? Me, myself, and iPhone. Yeah. So there's, th we're on part three tonight. We're going to be talking about social media. I know. It's a pretty scary thought. How many of you guys have social media? Of some sort. Texting is social media. All right. So social media, we're going to be talking about that tonight. Um, but first, we got a couple um, games that we want to play. And speaking of which, where's my, where's, the, I always lose my things. Where did I put it? I'll be back.
So, how many of you guys have ever gambled? Oh, that's a trick question. Don't answer that question. That is that is for another time. But anyway, um, I'm going to need some help. Can you help me here? We're going to be old people tonight, and we're going to be playing some bingo. So, can I have someone get us some pens? Everyone needs to have a pen. Okay, and you, you're allowed to read through it. Yeah, you have to get you have to get persons from all around the room. So you have to talk to people, and you have to say you have to whoever gets their sheet filled with the most signatures by the end of this timer or before they can come come up and get a prize or something. All right, you guys have it. How many of you don't have one? don't have a bingo sheet. This requires us standing and getting signatures from other people. You are only allowed to sign it once, okay? And other people are only allowed to sign it once unless there's absolutely no one. Then you can come ask for my permission. Oh, is, are they all, all done? Oh, man. All right, if you didn't get one, you can pair up with someone and you can be a team. All right. Three, two, one, go. What? Um, let's see. Which one? I don't want to take the bus. You gotta keep asking them the question and everyone can only sign once. So find one on there that you can sign. The person who gets it all filled out first wins the prize or whatever. So it's not it's not getting them in the line like normal bingo. It's getting all of them filled out. Who can get all of them filled out? And if you really can't find anyone, come see me.
So just in case you didn't hear it before, you have to get all of the blanks filled out. All of them, not just a line. You have to get all of them. All right, we have 14 more seconds. Yeah, we do have to find the clip. All right, five, four, three, two, one. All right, let's find our seats. Find your seats, find your seats, and we'll see. Did anyone get it all filled out? You can sign your own once. You're allowed to sign your own one time. Who thinks they got the most? Everyone count and see how much you have. Whoever thinks they have the most. You have to come up. Yeah. If you think you have the most. I know I don't got the most. All right. Let us hear from themselves. All right, what's, what was the most interesting fact that you found out about someone? There's a lot of people that go to the same school as her. A lot of people go to the same school as her. Did you find a left-hander? Yes. yes. Who is your left-hander? Oh, nice. So there are more than one, because I think Nate is a left-hander as well. All right, are you a left-hander as well? All right, all these. All right, so you want, did you count and see? 17, 17, 21? Come bring that paper here, let's see. I have to double check this and I will see, you can tell a joke in the meantime. Why are there multiple SBs? No, you're only allowed to get them to sign, oh. sign one. You are so, that is okay. At least you found someone that loves to take a vacation, playing a sport, falling asleep in class, has early lunch, is in band or choir, ready for some fun over the summer, got a haircut. Man, this person got a lot of things. All right, so what was the, the second... <laughs> The second one with people with, who got different signatures. I have 17. 17 different ones? 17. All right. Let's see. Do you have 17 different ones as well? Can I see it? Can you bring it? And let's see. Man, we might have a tie here. Did you have 17 as well? Like different ones? One repeat. OK. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Man. 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Man, if you'd come to me, I would have signed it and you would have gotten 18. Oh, I came to you, Justin. You did? Is that kind of extra? Um, no, it does not. I think we have a tie. Do you have 17 as well? Oh, you had one repeat. All right, does anyone have more than 17? No. All right, we both, we have a tie for first place, so you both get a prize. Um, do you guys like Mike and Ike's? All right, so they're getting the, the whole pack. Yep, of these, because I'm, I'm giving them away, because I realized that they're, like, broken. Which one do you want? I'm game. All right. Sweet. Congratulations, guys. Now you know that I'm serious giving away my prizes. All right. We have another game. Let's see. I'm going to need... Let's see. We'll do, it. we'll do it with sides again. So I'll need one volunteer from each side. All right. I saw this hand first. I saw your hand in the corner first. All right. So we're going to do a game called... Emoji charades. Do you guys have your phones? All right. Do you guys have emojis on your phones? All right. Someone is calling me. Um, yes. Go on text messages. So you are facing them. Okay. So they are only allowed to... Renata, do you have the instructions on there? There's a button that says how to play. So just so that I make sure, you're only the first contestant to use his or her phone to show the host which emoji the crowd is acting out gets a point, okay? Show me. Yep, so there's gonna be emoji popping up there. You cannot look at the screen, you have to look there. They are gonna be acting or showing you with their hands, or actions, or whatever, whatever emoji is up there, and whoever gets it right on their phone gets the point. Does that sound good? Yeah, you have to scroll through all of your emojis. All right, so trial round. Let's go. What's the first one? You guys can't look. And stop. All right, you have to, you have to, um, oh, I got it. Here's the not that one, not that one, that one. I think this one is it. Did you get that one? No. Well, there's like a smiley one, but not like with smiley eyes. Oh, is it the same one? Yeah, they're the exact same one. Okay. So I think. I think she got it first, but that was a trial run. Now we have more specific ones. All right, not just a smile. All right, three, three, two, one, go. And stop. All right, whoever gets it first. Whoever gets it first, whoever finds it first. Dun, 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 la, 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 la. Wakanda forever. You know, like the wah. Oh my goodness, the pressure is on. The pressure. Oh man, you guys got this? No, it's not that one. That is it, yeah. Good job. All right, so someone else, someone else from the team is coming up with their phone. So let's see. Um, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Who? Michaela, you want to keep score for us? Well, f- not for n- until she comes up. So, this, this side has one point so far. Luca, you can't look at the screen. Well, you got, all right, you got this. All right, three, two, one, go. And stop. Let's see, whoever gets it first. Whoever gets it first. Oh! Um, that that was it, but you yeah. you got it a little bit a little bit slow. So this side has two. All right, 
Come on up. Who's coming up with their phone next? All right, come on up. Let's see your emoji game. This is how quickly you can find the emoji. All right. And now, you ready? Three, two, one. No looking. Go. And stop. All right. All right. Um, almost. Almost, yes, that one's it. So that one was very close. It was very close. So this side is one point, this side is two. We're going again, who wants to come up? Who thinks their emoji game is pretty? Wait, did you go already? All right, come on up. Jolie, you coming up? Your emoji game's strong, I can tell. I can tell. You got this. No, you cannot. Nope, not. that would be cheating. All right, just open up just a random opening your mom's text message. All right, are you guys ready for this? Okay, three, two, one, go, and stop. All right. Yes. <laughs> I don't think I don't think it has to be the color. It just has to be the emoji. But you could have just used me. Get it? Didn't it? Shh. Okay. Anyway. Does anyone else Oh, you want to come? We'll do we'll do some people who haven't gone already. All right. So is it all tied up now? It is all tied up. We'll do three more. How about that? Three more. Who's coming up? Yeah, Chloe won. this with Kayla. Chloe won. All right. You're ready. You're ready for this. She has Cheetos in one hand and emojis in the other. Frito. Frito, Cheeto, same thing. <laughs> All right. You guys ready? Three, two, one, go. Now looking at the screen and stop. <laughs> All right, let's see whoever gets it first. Man, that's some really good acting right there. That is right. They got the running man. It was the little, little running man. Very good. You got it. All right, who's coming up next? We have two more. Two more. Alexia? Can I go again? Do you have a phone? No. I do, so. It has to be the last, the last round, someone can come up again. It has to be someone different. All right. You know where you find the emojis? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right here. Okay. All right. So you got to scroll through and get this emoji. Okay. Three, two, one, go. And stop. Oh boy, that was it. Oh, she got it just before you. That was so close. All right, this is the final round. You have to decide who is the fastest on your team. Decide for yourself. I don't care who comes up. Whoever is the fastest. Who's, who's coming up? This is the final round. Final round. What's the score right now? Four to two. Okay. I think you're winning. All right, we'll do a three-way tie. How about that? Three of you guys can do it. Anyone else want to come on this team? Come on up. Sure, if you want. All right. I'm going to count down. Ready? Three, two, one, go. And stop. Oh boy, oh boy, who's quick? Who's quick enough? Who's quick enough? Who's quick? Oh boy, oh, ah, ah, where is it? Oh no, oh no. 
one. No, not that one. Oh, that's that one. This, that's one. The, the that. latest one. this one. That's it. I got it. The latest one. <laughs> this one right oh, here. Oh, yes. I think it was a tie between these two. So how about, Renata, do we have one more? Oh, we have a couple more? All right. Three, two, one, go. All right, the first person who actually gets it stands up. Stop. Oh, this, this one's hard. This one is hard. Almost. Almost. It is on there. Nope. 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 You were really close just, just a second ago. Oh, you got it. But you, you didn't know which one, though. Did you, is that your final answer? The last one? All right. She got this one. What? It was the first one, but you got to decide on one. Has to be one. You can't, you can't have four of them and say one of these. All right, that's, that's all for this game. What is the score? Is it four to three? So congratulations, this side won this game. We have a couple more games real quick. No, they got four. Three, it was real close. It was real close. All right, this next game is yes what your bible you want to use your bible for the game sure this is guessing the bible story okay so we're just gonna ha have one person and let's see um you want to come help Sure. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna decide who says it first. They have to stand up, okay? They have to stand up and not shout out the answer, but have their hand up in the air, okay? And then whoever stands up and has their hand in the air first gets to answer. So don't shout it out, okay? So this is Bible stories. Can you tell the name of the Old Testament story? So we'll have one trial run just to figure out how this goes. All right, you're watching this side. I'll watch this side. Three, two, one, go. And stop. I saw Cheese and Alexia. All right, Alexia. Adam and Eve. Is that the answer? I th that is the answer. Congratulations. All right, so that was... The trial run, okay? We're, we're going with whatever she says. So maybe if she like, even like sits like up here. She's gonna decide who stands up and puts their hand up first. So that was the trial run. You ready? So you gotta sit. That was the trial run. She said, she said that she saw Alexia first. So whoever she sees is who we're gonna go with. You ready? You're standing and putting your hands up, all right? Three, two, one, go. And stop. Is it Jonah and the whale? It is. Congratulations. All right, this side has one point so far. All right, we're going to go again. Three, two, one, go. And stop. Oh, boy. Who is this? All right, whoever started he, first. He committed, he committed to it? Okay, who is it? Moses receiving the Ten Commandments. Moses receiving the Ten Commandments. Is that right? <laughs> kind of right. What was the answer? Oh, just take off Moses, the Ten Commandments. All right, we'll give it to them. We'll give it to them. They have two. All right, you got to be quick on the draw. Three, two, one, go. And stop. Just barely. What is it? 
Moses and the fiery bush. Is that right? That's pretty right. Burning bush. All right. So this side has three. This guy's gotten all three points for this team. So three, two, one, go. Oh, this is a long one. And stop. What is it? Noah and the ark. Well done. Well done. All right. So three, one. All right. And three, two, one, go. All right. You got a real, real thing. Think about your Bible stories here. Old Testament. Three, two, one, stop. Oh, Leah. Leah. Is it the prodigal son? No. no. Close. Who was next? Is it the golden calf when Moses came out from Mount Sinai? Is that it? The golden calf? Wow. Well done. That was impressive. How is that the golden calf? But I guess the mountain and the shiny thing and worshiping the cow and man, that that was that was really far fetched, but real good. Well done. <laughs> All right, we're gonna do a couple more. So it's four one, three two one, go. All right, and stop. Oh, he was quick. Who is it? Samson. Samson. I think that's right. Just a little quicker on the draw. A little quicker. I'm trusting Leah here. So close. What's the lady's name? Well, what's this is what's the full full name there, Renata? Oh, so I think I think we'll have to give it to this side because they knew they knew the name. They need it. It's okay. So is it what? Is it five two or four two or something? Four two. All right. Three two one go and stop. Oh boy. Oh, Leah. Yes, and she got all the names right too. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, or whatever. I call them Rakshak and Benny from VeggieTales. Any of you guys know? All right, there we go. All right, so is it 4 3? Yeah. Yeah. Well, she's counting. 4 3. 4 3. Oh, I think, I think she can. I think she can. All right, 3 2 1, go. And stop. Oh, boy. Is it Cain and Abel? No. no. Who is the next one? Alexia? Um, yeah. Abraham, Isaac, and the sacrifice. Is that right? Yeah. Well done. All right. So it's all tied up now. All right. We got one more. Hey, it's perfect. All right. You guys got to get to the edge of your seats now. Edge of your seats. Three, two, one, go. And stop. Just barely. What is it? Daniel in the lion's den. Is that right? That was right. All right. Well done. You guys did so well. We were a little scared there for a second. But this team, this team got it. All right. We got one more game for tonight. One more game. How many of you guys have a physical copy of the Bible? Thank you, Leah. Physical copy of the Bible? All right, come on up. So we do have a couple copies over here. Let's see. All right, we have a couple copies here for people who would like one. Who would like a physical copy of a Bible? Man, that's... 
the day you don't bring your Bible? You want one? All right. So, sword drill. How many of you guys have played this before? This is an intense game. We will have an electronic version of this very soon. So get your phones ready. But first of all, everyone, you know how this goes. Bible's up in the air. Bible's up in the air. Up in the air. All right. You may, oh, okay. One second. You guys keep the Bibles in the air. No, you just click spin. Okay, so it'll just go. Yeah. Okay. And then I think it just goes to a different one each time. And then you might have to just like refresh that. Okay. So, all right. So we're going to go with the first one. You guys can turn to face the screen. Hold your Bible closed with the spine facing up. And when, whenever the reference stops spinning on the screen is the one that you're going to go to. All right. Three, two, one, go. And stop. Psalm 5, 3. Oh, read it. Psalm 5, 3. Let's see. It is, in the morning, O Lord, you will hear my voice in the morning. I will order my prayer to you and eagerly watch. Well done. All right. What, what side was she on? She was on this side? Okay. Can you keep score for us? All right. We're going to go again. We're going to go again. All right. Leah's real quick. Three, two, one, go. And stop. Hebrews 12, one. Let's see. Let's see. Hebrews. Hebrew. Oh, what? Let's hear it. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, she got it again. That was real quick. All right. You want to read it for us? All right, this side has two points already. Whoever gets it first and, and says, like, hey, I get it. And then I just want them to read it because it's the word of God. All right, three, two, one, go. And stop. Matthew 5, 16. Matthew, 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 Matthew. It's the first book in the New Testament. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Man, she's, she's too quick. All right, we'll do one more physical copy. You guys got this. Three, two, one, go. And stop. Proverbs 17, 17. Real quick, Proverbs is kind of like in the middle of the Bible. Just open your book in the middle. And then, oh, we have pages falling out here. Oh, my goodness. It was so close. All right, read it for us. Our friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. Sweet. All right. So now, I thank you all for joining. I'm, I'm afraid that is all we have to do. But since we're talking about phones and screens, how many of you guys have the, the Bible app on their phone? We're going to see how quick our fingers are. All right. Um, yeah, you can, you can s sit there if you want. Actually, come up here if you want to play. All right. We got to be quick. All right. You ready? So, who's going to go? And start. Sure, if you want. And start. And stop. John 10, 14. Remember, you got to raise your hand or raise your phone up in the air. 
Raise your phone up in the air, John 10, 14. Oh, Landon, Landon. what do you guys think? Landon. All right, you're pretty quick. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Well done, well done. All right, that was real close. It was real close. We'll go again. Three, two, one, and start. And stop. First Thessalonians. One nine. Got it. Read it. Oh, he's still looking. No, what? he's still looking. Or they themselves report what kind of reception you gave. It started in the middle of a sentence. It started in the middle of a sentence. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well done. Well done. So, the way how we're gonna know if you find the verse as well is you have to click on the verse and you have to highlight it. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. So it's not just the chapter you're looking for. You gotta click the verse. You have to highlight the whole thing. Yep. Just click the verse, it usually highlights it. All right, three, two, one, go. And stop. Lamentations 3, 22 and 23. So you have to, you have to highlight the two verses. 22 and 23, is it highlighted? He did underline it. Oh, that was quick. Oh, you got it underlined? Yeah, I got it underlined. And highlighted? All right, read it. The faithful love of God, of be- the faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each morning. Well done. All right, so I think that was the last one. Thank you all so much for joining. Sword drill, man. Gets, gets, you, uh, gets you every time. Whoa, the name of this Bible is the book. That's pretty cool. Oh, this is a hard Bible to try to find. All right, so we're going to move in to a time of worship now. And then after that, we're just going to talk about a couple things about, remember what, I was, uh, what was our topic today? Yes, but what part of it? Social media. All right, so I'm inviting the worship team up. And you guys can come down to the front. All right, you guys ready? Does anyone know how to get the lights? Yes? No? All right, you want to get the lights for us, Cheese? Oh, Bailey's got it. All right.
Man, that song was so intense, I broke my pick. <laughs> Pretty crazy. Do you have one? You have another one? Oh, you, you got one? All right, thank you, man. All right. You guys ready? This song declares and it acknowledges and it tells of how God is the winner of the battle from now until forever.
our God, and how do we fight our battles? On our knees, praying, because he's the one who does the fighting. We just have to stand on the winning side.
so thankful for what he, have done, he has done for us. God, death could not hold you. The veil tore because of you. Lord, you broke sin. You broke the grave for me. And now I no longer have to die. Lord, because of your son, we can have life. Life now here on earth and life eternally. And we thank you so much for that gift that you have given to us, Lord. God, help us now as we open your word to realize that you love us more than anything else that you created. And we are children of God. And our citizenship is not here on earth, but Lord, it is in heaven. Help us to live for the eternal and not for now, Lord. Help us not be distracted by the things of this world. Lord, you died. You literally died for me. And I could never even imagine the pain and the suffering that you endured on that cross. God, but why? Only because you loved me. And Lord, help me to remember that now. Praise your powerful and holy name, Jesus Christ. And we pray this in that name only. Amen. You guys can have a seat. I got a couple things here. Maybe I can get some help given out. Um, you gotta get one one of them each. All right. So we're talking about social media tonight. Before we uh, we start talking about that, I uh, I really enjoy that time of worship. How about you guys? That was awesome. We get to sing praises to our Jesus. All right, do you guys have pens as well? Still have your pens from bingo? Or not really? You have Sharpies? All right. All right, so last week I started off with a bunch of statistics. You remember that? Anybody remember how many days we spend in front of our phones or in front of screens? I think it was nine years. That's crazy. Nine years of an average person's life is when we stare and stare at a screen. So the main, the main idea of our, uh, our session today, do we have any extras of a... Uh, oh, I think... You got all, all of them are delivered. All right, so if I, if I miss a blank, just let me know. Um, but all right, so let's talk about some social media apps now. So I know I'm a grandpa, and I use old social media apps. But how many of you guys use Facebook? Man, I got some old people in here, too. Dude, I understand. So I was really, really excited when I was a kid. I was really excited when I even heard about Facebook. I had no idea what it was. I didn't even have a smartphone. I didn't even have my own computer, but I wanted to join Facebook. And I was so excited. I think I was 12 years old when I first heard about it. And it became the big thing. This is when Facebook just was invented. That's how I old, old I was. Um, and I wanted to join this so bad. And I logged on there and I tried to do it. And, I, and they couldn't allow me to do it. Why? Because I was too young. How old do you have to be? 13. So guess what I asked for my 13-year-old present? Facebook. I know. It's crazy. That's what I asked for a birthday present. It was crazy. But I joined social media. And then I started adding friends that I hadn't seen since... Um, like, I don't know what you guys call it, but we call it like primary school. So it was primary school, then secondary school. So it's like, I don't know, older school, elementary school. Yeah. So I was like, oh, I remember this friend that I had that we used to take naps or we used to play with Play-Doh and throw it at the girls. 
And I'm like, I wonder if this guy is still around. So I look him up and I find him and he's somewhere across the world and he added me as a friend. And I was so excited when the world just automatically became smaller through social media. So that's Facebook, right? How many of you know how many people are on Facebook? You want to guess? Two billion, really close. A little bit more. 2.5 2.5, that's really close. It's actually 2.6. 2.6, so just, just other than that. 2.6 billion people. 1 million? That's, oh no, it's definitely more than that. It is 2.6 billion, and some of those are right in here. So this is... This is Facebook, right? This is just one form of social media. How many of you guys have, and this will probably be the most popular one, how many of you guys have Instagram? No, is this old people news too? No? No? So for teenagers, right? So a lot of people have Instagram. Instagram kind of built its platform off of Facebook and they were slightly different. They were more pictures and videos talking about things. They're not really about posts, yep. Oh, did it go up? Man, well, the, at the point I did this research, it was probably less than that. So thank you for telling me. It is actually 2.9 million on Facebook. How many people? 2.934 million. How many people are in America? 300 million, so not even a billion. Wait, really? 327 million. I like my fact, fact checkers here. Thank you. Um, all right, so this is another, another social media platform. How many of you guys have Snapchat? I feel like this is the most popular one. This is like kind of phasing out, kind of like the last. So I remembered when Snapchat just came out, I was kind of addicted to Snapchat. How many of you guys do streaks? Streaks. Okay, so for, for those of you who don't know what a streak is, a streak is when you send a snap to someone, so you send a picture to someone, and they snap you back. That is a conversation. You do that for consecutive days, you build what is called a streak. What is your longest streak? Let's see who has the longest streak here. 17, I like that number. I like that number. All right, what is it? 104, 483, 4, what, 36, 856, you guys heard this, 856 days, oh, okay, that's awkward, but not that weird at all, but what was the, what was the score, what was your score again? 856. You guys know what the world record for streak is? The longest streak? It's probably more than this by now, but it is 2,414. How many? No, that is the longest streak. So that is you have to be constantly online for 2,000 days. Not constantly online, but just at least send it and have an internet connection within 24 hours. So that is every day. Every single day. You guys know how many years that is? I don't know. Who has their calculator? What's, what is 2,400? Six and a half years of s- talking to one person every single day. That's... Well, this, for this streak, it's for one person. I know. It's pretty crazy. Yep. I do not have a streak. I do not use Snapchat. I use it once a week to send out a snap to you guys. So if you guys don't have the youth group on Snapchat, let me know, and I will get it to you. All right. Let's, let's move on here. 640. That is pretty impressive. How many of you guys use YouTube? So 
So I feel like YouTube has a lot in store for it, right? So this is not really a social media, but this captures a lot of our time. How many of you guys just like watch YouTube videos just for fun? Tutorial videos or uh, gaming videos or music videos or listen to them. Well, sometimes you look at it, but then sometimes you change it. So this is just a form of media that is coming in our, in our life. Yeah. Well, maybe after, if we have time. But I want to really get through this. All right, how many of you guys have Pinterest? A lot of girls have Pinterest, right? So this is to, to plan their dream house or their dream room or dream wedding, dream wedding dresses. I don't know what else it has on Pinterest. But like, if I want to like design something really cool, I like look on Pinterest. I'm like, get some ideas, right? So they, they have lots of, lots of crazy things. All right. So now we're going way back, even kind of before I was even thinking about social media. How many of you guys at least have heard of MySpace? A fake version of MySpace. So this is kind of where social media started, right? It started with this, then Facebook kind of took a little bit of that idea. This was established, ready, ready for this? In 2003, how many of you guys were born? Man, so this was existing before you guys were born, but like just before, right? So this is, this is, yeah, this is kind of where we're going. This was the first social network with a global reach and a lot of parents freaked out, okay? Listen, you guys listening? Listen, or I'll have to take the phones away. So this is why parents freaked out, right? Are you listening? Because they could post a profile picture, they can share their hobbies, they can share music and interests. I know, I know. Parents were freaking out all over the world. How dare they be able to post a picture? You're done, you're done, you're done, you're done. You're done. Exactly. So this is, this is kind of why they freaked out. But now, this is like an everyday thing, like literally every day. I know people who change their profile pictures every day. And I have no idea why. I don't know why. I think my mother's one of them. I don't know. Mom, if you're listening, sorry. Um, but yeah, so this was, this was crazy in this time, right? To be able to change your profile picture. So now, I don't want you guys to think, you guys listening, I don't want you guys to think that social media is bad, okay? Not everything on social media is bad. It's a great place. You remember I got to uh, connect with some of my friends, which I haven't even seen in a long time. I got to keep up with people. I get to kind of mind other people's business by seeing their pictures and liking them and giving them encouragement through things. Um, but can social media be bad? It definitely can be bad. Now we're going to be talking about some ways social media are bad and how we can protect ourselves. So it is important, listen, it is important to have, and this is a key word here, wisdom and discernment in how we go about using social media, right? So those two words are wisdom and discernment. Anyone know what the word wisdom means? Yeah, making a smart decision. Not necessarily what's right or wrong, but what's the wisest thing to do, right? You want to... What? what? Yeah, using knowledge in a good way, using knowledge in a right way. That's wisdom. What is discernment? Yeah, the difference between right and wrong. So we have to decide, so there's a situation, what is the difference here between right and wrong? And if we can figure that out, that means we have discernment. So we're using wisdom and discernment with social media. So I believe that God gives us these, um, but it's our job to use it well, 
right? So God lives in us. The Holy Spirit lives in us. We have a conviction. We definitely know what are right things and what are wrong things. How many of you guys like have no idea what is right and what's wrong? A lot of us have at least an idea. Or if we're doing something, you're like, well, this is, doesn't feel right. That's probably because it's wrong. And if you have to ask yourself if it's right or wrong, most of the times it's wrong. If you have to even consider that, be like, is this the right thing to do? Then it's most likely not the right thing to do, right? So point number one on your little paper thing, and I want to just say these things and then we'll read some scripture and then we'll be done. So point number one is think before you type. Our words are permanent, and it's pretty scary, right? So think before you type. A lot of us, all the time, sometimes if we have social media, we type things out, we post things, and once that is sent, that is permanent. We have no idea who can see it, how much they've seen, how long they've seen it, if they've screenshotted it, once you post something, that is permanent, okay? No matter if you delete it or not, it can be seen by some people. So I want you guys to really think before you type. You know, a lot of people say, think before you speak. This is speaking for social media. Whatever you type is what goes out there and what other people can view you for. So James 1.19 says this, everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. So this is a pretty convicting verse. How many of you guys have ever seen something online and kind of got ticked off at it? Be like, mm, I don't like that. I don't like what they just posted. I don't like what they are agreeing with. I'm actually really angry. How many of you guys think people have actually thought about that about you, about what you posted? Do you think if you reverse, reverse the, um, the roles here and you post something, do you, do you think before you type, are you angering other people? Are you actually annoying other people? Are you trying to maybe poke the fire a little bit with something that you've gotten or you've earned or someone you're friends with, a relationship you're, you're with, a lot of times we don't really think through all the things before we post, right? So James here, he gives us some solid wisdom. When we can be too quick to share what's on our mind, we might regret what we have to say and we might actually never even mean what we had to say in that moment. Have you ever texted something to someone or posted something or maybe sent something by mistake and then was like, oh no, whoops. Or have you ever liked a picture or commented on something and then later on you read it and you're like, ugh, probably should not have done that. So it happens, it happens. If it hasn't happened to you yet, it will happen because we're human beings and we make mistakes, but I want to tell you, I definitely have done that before and I regretted it and I hurt someone's feelings and I didn't even know. Why didn't I not even know? Because I just sent it, locked my phone and put it down and I forgot it. It wasn't even a conversation that I was having in my head. It was just an initial reaction. And it's so easy to have initial reactions to things. Even pictures that we see online, things that we see. Are we liking these things? Are we following these types of people? This, is, this can be pretty dangerous if we don't think. So sometimes you're like, oh, this is pretty cool. Let me follow this. But then when you follow it, you realize, oh, they have some not good things on their page. But I'm only going to follow the good things on their page. So what can other people see can other people see if you're following this person? Can other people actually see what pictures you like or what pictures you've commented on? So this is all things that we don't really think about that are happening 
to us on the daily. And social media is so engulfing that they just have you focusing on the thing right in front of you and not the bigger picture. So what about this? You may have heard how people can be more willing to say things online than they would face to face. I know that has happened to me. Sometimes I may not have the courage or the boldness or even the rudeness to say something to someone face to face, but online I can definitely hide in my room, hide behind a phone, hide behind an unread message and say something that I would not say to someone face to face. What is the difference? I want you to really think about that. That's, I mean, it wasn't really a question, but you want to answer it? There is no difference. There's no difference. Exactly. There is no difference between you talking to someone face to face and you texting them face to face. Not texting them like, or on a FaceTime call or maybe on a message. What is the difference? Absolutely nothing. We're, con- we're conversing with the person. So why can we be absolutely rude or maybe sinful in our texting and we can hide behind our phones? Why is that allowed? It's easy to just post something without thinking about the consequences. You are kind of invisible behind your phone because you can hide and you don't have to see that person. You don't have to give them a reaction. They don't have to give you a reaction. It's just messages going back and forth. But the truth is, there can be some great repercussions to what we say. There actually can be some consequences to what we say online. So think think about this, and this is just an example of how uh, repercussions can happen. Think about an influencer. So you know we have influencers in the world? So an influencer. Think about how quickly they can become canceled in this culture if they just say something wrong. If they happen to say they like, I don't know, this is just a dumb example, but like say they say, I like Minecraft more than Fortnite. What, are gonna, what is going to happen to that particular influencer streamer? A lot of people are not going to like him. A lot of people are going to unfollow him. A lot of people are going to type some hate things. And this is just a silly example. What about influencers who say um, they support the LGBTQ movement? What do you think is going to happen to them? A lot of people are, are actually going to have something to say about it. And a lot of people don't think before they say, say things. A lot of people don't say things in love. And they can become destroyed by just saying something really silly. A lot of it happens to Christians today when they post what they really believe in. So if they post something, say, I don't believe abortions um, is right. What happens to that person online? A lot of people don't like that stance. And a lot of people actually care so much about it that they go to the opposite end where they become angry at other people for even having a different view. Now, I'm not saying that we should approve any of these things or disapprove any of these things, but I'm saying that as Christians, we need to take a stance. And we need to believe and act on things that we know it's right. And it should not matter what other people have to say but how we react to other people is what is most important how we react to someone who says that they maybe believe in this how are we going to condemn them are we going to fight them down are we going to become angry at them are we going to block them no no that's not a that's not a loving thing to do yes they have a different view but If we show them that we love them, we can definitely have an influence in their life. Maybe open their eyes to things that they have not seen before. So as Christians, I want you to take a stand on what you believe in and what is right. Not just because you believe it through all your heart means that it's right. So we need to search the scriptures and think about what we have to do. 
think about what we post before we say it. The second thing that I have um, that I want to make sure that you guys know tonight is um, be picky with the words that you choose to post. So this is just another word, another uh, way to think. So sometimes we just type and then we post, right? How many of us actually read over what we type? How many of us are picky with the words? You're like, um, maybe I should change the way I said that. Maybe that will offend someone. And we really do, we really do care about this because we want to show people our love with our posts, right? Ephesians 4.29 says, No foul language should come from your mouth, but only what is good for building someone up in need, so that it gives grace to those who hear. So God's word is pretty clear here, that if our words are for anything other than building someone up, then don't say it. Yeah. That, is, that is literally what the God's word is saying here. If it's not building someone up, don't say it. It's not, it's not worth it. It's not what the Lord wants us to do. So Paul, the writer here of this uh, verse, he encourages us instead to show grace to those who might want to say mean things. I know that sometimes we want to say mean things. Sometimes we get really angry. Sometimes we just want to give them that little punch underneath just for some good measure. How many of you guys kind of feel like that sometimes? Especially with people that are kind of annoying. I know. It's, it's, it is a real thing. Sometimes we want to say mean things but what does the Lord tell us that we have to do? You remember the quick ver the uh, verse before? Everyone should be quick to listen and slow to speak and slow to anger. So he didn't just leave that part out in the end. He's like, slow to speak, but you can still be angry. No, he's like, slow to speak and slow to be angry. We don't want to have a, a spirit of anger, but a spirit of love. So Paul knew exactly what he was saying here. If it's not building someone up, then don't say it. Write that down. If it's not building someone up, then don't say it. That's it. Sometimes we have to have honest conversations with people. Sometimes we have to have conversations with people in truth and love. And then sometimes we have to express hurt or frustration. But is there a way to s express those things with love? Absolutely. You can sit down with your brother or sister in Christ and be like, hey, that actually really did hurt me. That actually, maybe you didn't mean it like this, but this is how I, I meant it. And deep down inside, I felt really hurt about that. Do you think someone's going to be like, yeah, well, you deserve it. No, if you sit down and you talk to someone like that, most of the time, a lot of people are going to be like, oh, I, I didn't know it would affect you like that. I'm actually really sorry for what I said. And that's not what I meant to say. Maybe they cleared it, cleared it up. So a lot of times, and I'm guilty of this too, I don't take that opportunity to express that I was hurt with someone to their face. A lot of times I just try to suck it in. I'm like, well, it's fine. That's what they mean. Maybe they didn't know any better. But the Bible tells us that we are to love one another, even speaking about things that are hard, speaking about things that um, are painful, that happened in the past, maybe that they are possibly going to do, um, that it really hurts us. So, Matthew 18, 15 says this. If your brother or your sister sins, go and point out their fault just between the two of you. If they listen, you have won them over. And that's exactly what we were just talking about. If your brother or sister sins, that means anything that does not glorify God, something that might have hurt you, something that actually maybe 
hurt someone else that you love. If they sin, what does Scripture, Jesus Christ, God himself, what does God have to say about it? Go and point out their fault just between the two of you. So you're not pointing it out on Facebook. You're not pointing it out on Instagram or a tweet. You're not saying, well, this person hurt me and this is how I feel about it. Is that the right way to approach things? No. No, that's not a loving thing to do. That's actually going to be poking anger from the other person. And then they're probably going to fire back. And then it's just going to become so, so, so unnecessary. An unnecessarily battle of anger. Probably not even worth it at all. No. You go just between the two of you. And guess what? If they listen to you, what does the verse say? You've won them over. You've actually won. How many of you guys like to win things? How many of you guys like to win arguments? A lot of times we like to win arguments, right? It's, I mean, no one likes to lose an argument. But this is, this is a way to actually prevent an argument in the first place. You want to win your brother and sister if you go to them and you talk to them in love. You sit, you sit down with them and you don't hold it against them. You want to be able to forgive them. A lot of times we see, especially on social media, a lot of people getting, getting blasted online. They're actually like, they're at the, at, the, at the target and a lot of people are just like shooting lots of different things at different angles. A lot of times it's entertaining, right? And we're like, oh, well, let's see what happens there. What happens now? Who's going to say this? Oh, did you see this? That's not the right attitude to have different things. Someone is actually getting hurt by this. And we want to make sure that we want to prevent hurt by acting in love. So, talk about things in private with someone. I would encourage you now, if you have beef with someone, that's what they call it. If you have beef with someone, don't just keep it on the inside and be like, oh, I'm so afraid. Or don't deal with it by spreading gossip about something else. Or don't deal with it by talking about maybe some of their past sins or their hurts just so that you feel better. No, go to them and be like, hey, how can we, how can we reconcile? How can we get this to a place where um, maybe we can be friends? Or maybe we can have this go past us, right? There's a lot more to life than just being angry with someone, being upset with someone, and you never know. They can take that and actually be like, wow, that person is a great example of how Christ is commanding us to be. And then they can help, they can actually change their own lives. So point number three um, says, our choice of words tells our followers how it is we want to be known. Our choice of words tells our followers how it is that we want to be known. How many of you guys want to be known? Then the next question is, what do you want to be known for? So there's, there's lots of different things, right? But a lot of times, people kind of form the idea of what you are or who you are by what you post. And it's, it's scary. A lot of times, people define the entire person by their online profile. It doesn't matter who they are in real, but their online profile is saying something completely different. That's who they are. In, in your brain, you know them by their Instagram name. You know them by their snap streak score. What are we known by? And that's a great question to ask yourself. Luke 6 and verse 45 says this. A good person produces good out of the good stored up in his heart. An evil person produces evil out of the evil stored up in his heart. For his mouth speaks from the overflow of the heart. So you guys remember a couple of weeks ago we talked about what we speak um, is kind of what defines us. And then what defines us actually comes from our heart. And we said garbage in is garbage out. Remember, whatever you take in, it, it not only affects our, our minds and how we think, it affects our hearts and what we do and our actions. So our actions and our words 
Are they a product of our heart? I realize that, you know, sometimes what I post is not always what I really care about the most. A lot of times we post a lot of stupid things and a lot of funny things. And we're like, well, that's just funny. I'm just going to share it. But do you think other people are looking at this and defining you by what you post? Absolutely. That's how the world works. I mean, it shouldn't be that way. It shouldn't be what we post is who we are. It should definitely be the opposite. It should be who we are should define what we post. And who, who are you? You are Christians. You are followers and children of God. And that should definitely affect what you do. So my big question for all of us is, do our posts on social media, think about this, do our posts on social media, do they honor the values and beliefs that we have? Do they honor God? Psalm 19 and verse 14 says, Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. A lot of times we don't really care about what we post. And I'm just telling you tonight that it does matter. Even if it doesn't matter to you, it matters online. And online is actually a scary place because it's where a lot of people get who get to define your character by what you post online. And that's just becoming who, who you are. And that's not your fault, but it's where, it's where this society and the culture is going. We are being defined by what we have online. So I'm telling you, be wise and be discerning with whatever you post. Um, just, I want to encourage you to, this is not me telling you that we, that we have to uh, post scripture all the time. It's not a bad thing to post scripture all the time, but post things that honor God. Post things that don't dishonor the name of God, that don't promote sin, that don't promote um, lust of the world or anything like that. But you can definitely post some things that glorify God. Creation, that glorifies God. It doesn't have to be scripture all the time. I'm not telling you you have to do this and this and this. But I'm telling you that you have to use wisdom with what you post because people define you by it. So because I'm a follower of Jesus, I want to make this statement. I want everything that I do to be honoring to God. Because I am a follower of Jesus, you guys listening, because, of, because I am a follower of Jesus, I want to do everything to honor God. And actually, that may go a long way with the people that you follow. I know I had a story one time of someone who came up to me and said that they really appreciated sometimes that I would post some, something encouraging or a blessing that happened and I gave the glory to God. And they realized, wow, I don't have God in my life at all. Maybe if I started going back to church, I started surrounding myself with better people, better friends, maybe my life will be honoring to God. And maybe I can have some of these blessings too. Not saying that honoring God and loving God is going to bring you blessings, but God definitely honors those who honor Him. And it is a promise in Scripture that we have to honor God and he will be with us all the time. So I just want to encourage you. This is a couple tips and a different things, practical things that we can do with our social media. It can be a lot, especially since this is how we are. And we're like, this is my social media presence. I can't change now. Of course you can change now. This is who you are. Your words have a powerful influence. And I just want to encourage you now. Take your time. Think about what you post. Think about something before you actually just click that send button. Before you start looking at all those likes, think about, could this offend someone? Could this actually be hurtful to someone that I love? And we want to take a stand for the gospel. We want to definitely stand up for the gospel and don't actually um, take away from that at all. You always post the gospel. If you're posting the gospel, post it clear. You, if you offend people with the gospel, then that's a good thing, okay? 
But you don't want to offend people with your words. You don't want to offend people with what you do. You want to show them, show them love, show them care. And that's what we want to do. So um, that's all I have for you. We got 10 more minutes, and you guys have some discussion questions there. Um, real quick, 10 minutes, I just want you... Um, we can actually just do it up here. We can have like the guys maybe like in the back there and like some of the girls over here. And let's just talk through some of our questions and then just find out some practical ways and then we'll pray with each other and then we'll be done for tonight. So let's have a... Uh, guys, do you want to go downstairs or do you want to stay upstairs?